Hey everybody, it's Leslie from Sew A Lot Creative Sewing Centers in Lexington, Kentucky and Centerville, Ohio. I am coming to you with a bonus Kimberbell Digital Dealer exclusive monthly video. Um, we have the opportunity for a bonus design. So we are offering up a second video detailing the instructions on um, how to make these super cute cinch sacks with Santa mail or a bag of coal so you can get ready for the holidays. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and look forward to seeing all of your projects. So the first thing we're gonna do for our cinch bag is whether you're doing the bag of coal or the Santa bag is going to be to take your two pieces, your two long pieces of fabric. We're gonna fold those in half, right sides out, wrong sides together, hamburger ways. So you're gonna take the long, you're gonna take the long length of the fabric and fold the openings down together. So the fold runs across. You're just gonna press that to create a crease at the top and the center. Press out any wrinkles that you might have. You're gonna do that with both pieces of fabric. Again, if you're working with a fabric that is got a right and a wrong side, you're gonna have wrong sides together, right sides out. And we're just gonna press to create that crease. We're gonna take one of those pieces of fabric, which is gonna be the outside part of our bag, we're gonna open it up and on the wrong side of the fabric, on one half, we are going to fuse some fusible backing, SF-101, woven fusible, one of those fabrics, so that just one side is gonna have that on it. I just folded the other half over on top of it to use as a pressing cloth. Once that's adhered, you'll see that the woven fusible or the fusible backing is only on one side. This side doesn't have any. This is gonna be the front of our bag where we do our embroidery, that piece there. So that's just extra stabilizer to help keep that from drawing up as we are stitching on it. Now we're gonna get ready to hoop our fabric, or I'm sorry, hoop our stabilizer. We're gonna use a mesh stabilizer, a cutaway mesh stabilizer. We're just gonna center that in the hoop. Put our hoop ring back in, make sure that we have it right side up and lock it in tight. Next, we're gonna call up our stitch file on our machine in our format and get ready to start stitching. So the first thing we're gonna do now that we have our stabilizer hooped and our fabric pressed and ready to go is stitch some cut lines and placement lines right on our stabilizer. I'm gonna use a darker shade of thread so that you can see this well on the video. You can use a darker thread, you can use something that's gonna match your background fabric, whatever you'd like to do. Once it stitches this first line, this is actually a cut line, we're gonna remove the hoop from the machine and we're gonna cut along this line, right along this stitch line, and one half inch past on either end. So we're gonna cut a straight line here, one inch past either end and right across that line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna start a half inch or a little more out past that line. Just gonna poke it through my stabilizer and then I'm gonna cut right on this line and then again go about a half inch past on the other end. So I have a slit in my stabilizer. And then we're gonna put the hoop back onto the embroidery arm and do some more placement stitching. Once we have this placement line here, as well as the cut in our stabilizer, I'm gonna take the piece of fabric that we fused the fusible onto, and I'm gonna open it up. Once I've opened it, I'm gonna take that crease that we created by pressing, and I'm gonna line it up with that cut line. And then I'm going to center it so that I have an even amount all the way around the right and the left side and on the bottom, making sure that fold line stays right on that opening. I'm gonna use some Kimberbell tape and tape this down into place. Now at this point, my extra fabric, which is gonna be the lining for the front of the bag, is gonna be opened and facing the top. So we're looking at the right side of the fabric. The fusible is underneath of this part that we've put the lower part and our fold is right on that line and we're centered so that we have an even overhang on the right and the left and a little at the bottom. And then we're gonna stitch this down in place. Again, I'm using black so that you can see my thread. Next, on the Santa bag, we are going to stitch out the Santa Claus silhouette as well as the reindeer. This is called for in black thread. Um, it does recommend changing to a black bobbin or a matching bobbin. From here, we're gonna stitch out the reindeer and the 
Santa, the present, and the sleigh bottom. <laughs> Once that detail work has finished stitching out, the next thing you're gonna stitch is the placement stitch for the body of the sleigh. In this particular sample, we're using the black leather from Kimberbell, and I'm just gonna cover up that entire placement stitch, and then we're gonna tack it down. Next, we're gonna remove the hoop and trim around the sleigh. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim close around the edges. This is a raw edge finish. So the leather makes for a really nice piece felt because it won't ravel. If you're using fabric, I would recommend something that you can put a fusible backing on, um, a double-sided fusible web so that you can iron it and stick it down. The glitter would also make a really fun sled. Once that's all finished, we're going to take this back to the machine and finish doing some more detail work stitching. Before I go back to stitching, it does recommend you go back to a neutral bobbin. So I'm just gonna put my white bobbin fill back in. I'm gonna change out your thread color to what you would like for the words Santa mail and continue to stitch. After the words finished, we're gonna continue on stitching out in the color chart order, the rest of the detail work. So next it's gonna do the mail service and the little postage mark. So I've switched back to black. Once the detail work is finished on either your Santa bag or your bag of coal, the last step is going to be to stitch out the ribbon holes. So these little buttonholes are gonna stitch out next. And you'll just wanna make sure that you use whatever thread color you would like to be your buttonholes. If you want it to blend in with your bag fabric, make it that color. If you want it to blend in with your ribbon, make it that color. The other thing I like to do is just put a little piece of tape up here at the top to hold these nice and flat. This isn't where it's stitching, but it just kind of holds that fabric in place and keeps it from drawing in while you're stitching those buttonholes. Now that our buttonholes and our detail work are finished stitching, we're going to remove the basting stitches and we're going to open up these buttonholes before we move on to the next step. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this basting stitch that's running along the top. Pull out all those little threads. And then I wanna open up these buttonholes. If you haven't seen this trick before, if you take a straight pin, stick it in to the top of the buttonhole opening, and then back through your fabric, it's gonna create a stop. So that when you take your seam ripper and put it right down in to the buttonhole, and you tear the fabric, you're only gonna tear up to that pin and you won't accidentally cut through your buttonhole. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm just gonna take this and stick it right in, use my seam ripper and cut right up to that button, or right up to that pin and then remove it. Once we've done this, we're gonna take, I'm gonna remove the tape up here and I'm gonna slide the lining for the front of the bag in through that slot we created of the stabilizer. I'm gonna flip my hoop over Pull this down flat and tape it in the corners to hold it in place. If you want to put an extra piece of tape on these edges, it's not a bad plan. Next, we're going to take this back to the machine to stitch this in place. Now that I have it back on the machine, I'm just going to stitch and we're going to create this line around to tack that piece we've just taped to the back side. Next, you're gonna stitch the casing for your ribbon on the front. So again, you probably wanna match your background fabric. Maybe you want it to pop out and be red to create your casing. Maybe you even wanna use the black. Completely up to you, but just know it is gonna create a casing around these buttonholes that is going to stay there. Next, we can remove this tape from the front and the back side of the hoop. Next, we're going to take our additional piece of fabric, which is going to be the front, or I'm sorry, the back and the lining of the back. We're going to open that up and with right sides together of the fabric, so you're looking at the wrong side of the fabric, you're going to place that down on top of your stitch out. The fold line should be right at that cut line that we created at the beginning and your excess is gonna hang off the top. Now I'm gonna take a couple pieces of tape and just tape this 
in place. And then we're gonna stitch this down. I'm gonna remove my pieces of tape. I'm gonna remove the hoop from the machine. Next, we're gonna turn that hoop over. I'm gonna take that excess piece that's on the front and tuck it through the hole. I'm gonna pull this down to match up with the other lining piece we've created. And I'm gonna tape it in place at these corners in the bottom. Once I have this in position, I'm gonna return the hoop to the machine for the final stitch out. Now the embroidery is finished. We're gonna remove the hoop, do some trimming, close up the hole right side out and create our ribbon cinches. So from here, I'm gonna remove the design from the hoop. Next, I'm going to trim this all out. I'm gonna trim it at a quarter of an inch around the stitching lines. So I'm only gonna trim it off on three sides. The side, the bottom, and the opposite side. Once I've done that, it's gonna come loose from the stabilizer because of that cut we had already created. I am, however, gonna come in here and clip my corners at the bottom, and I like to double clip them. So I clip once across and then come back and take a deeper cut. This just makes for nice points when we turn the bag. You wanna be cautious about trimming the upper corners if you wanna do a little bit there, you can just be very careful not to cut through the stitching or you're gonna have a hole in the top of your bag. Next, we're going to flip this right side out. So on one side, you're gonna find a hole between one layer of fabric and all the other layers of your fabric. And you're gonna turn this through that hole and poke out your corners. When you make this first turn, you're gonna be looking at the lining of the bag not the outside. So not the pretty stuff yet. It's still gonna be tucked inside your bag. I'm gonna poke out my corners. And from here, I like to open this up and give it a good press one time. When I do that, I like to fold up the bottom where that opening is and give that a nice press too. It's just gonna make it easier for us to close up that hole if it has a nice pressed finish on it. Once I've pressed that, I have my hole folded up. We're gonna close up that hole. Now, in your directions, it's gonna give you directions about whip stitching that closed. By all means, feel free to do that. If you're not a fan of hand stitching and you wanna get this done, we can glue this hole up with some liquid stitch. So where I've pressed that, I'm just gonna take my bottle of liquid stitch. I'm gonna run this along here. I think I got a little heavy handed on my glue. That's okay. I'm gonna turn that in and I'm gonna press those two layers together. If you've never used Wonder or never used liquid stitch before, it's a really nice fabric glue. It will hold your fabrics together and keep them from coming apart. The glue does recommend that you let it set for 24 hours before it's fully dried and sealed, so I always let mine sit for a little bit first. Wonder clips work great when you're gluing something up to kind of hold it in place, but usually I give it a couple minutes. The glue will set enough that I can turn this right side out, and then I can finish up putting my ribbons in and let it dry overnight before I give it away. It's pretty quick acting. So once I have that hole cl closed up either with my liquid stitch or with my needle and thread. Sorry. I'm going to turn the bag right side out. Once I have the bag right side out, I'm going to take this to my wool mat and I'm going to spray it with a little spray and press that to get off any creases, wrinkles from turning it. Now, in our instructions, we have um, on page eight some additional steps for creating a casing on the back side of the bag for your ribbon. This is totally up to you if you'd like to do. Um, the casing on the front is created. There is a slot in the, the side of the back from the lining or from the front to the back that will allow you to slide the ribbon through there. But there are directions on how you can mark and stitch out on your sewing machine a casing for this back part. I will tell you I've made a lot of these bags before. I've never put the casing in the back just for pure and simply other than aesthetics, it's not really needed. 
uh, the bag will function just like normal. And once you have it cinched up, you're not really going to notice one way or the other. So, but completely up to you. If you'd like to add that in there, by all means, you have directions on page eight that will allow you to do that. Next, we're going to talk about how to feed the ribbon in. So these directions are also in your printout, your PDF. They're going to give you nice step-by-step -step pictures. But I'm going to take two lengths of my ribbon and I'm going to put them together evenly. You can use a safety pin. You can use a bodkin, whatever works best for you. I'm going to feed my two pieces of ribbon through my bodkin and I'm going to slide them through the buttonhole on the front side. I'm going to slide this all the way across. And if you're using a safety pin, you're just going to slide that safety pin in there and you're going to have to give it a little tug. It's, it's going to be thick. You're going to pull those two pieces of ribbon out the other side. I'm going to release my bodkin and then from here, I'm gonna take my ribbon and I would like one short and one long on each side. Doesn't matter if it's the top or the bottom. So I'm just gonna pull out one of the pieces of ribbon so that it has a short side on the right and a long side on the left. And then I'm gonna do the opposite with my other piece. I'm gonna have a short side on the left and a long side on the right. Once that's done, I'm gonna take one of my long pieces Put it back into my safety pin or my bodkin and again i'm only going to do one at this point and i'm going to take and i'm going to flip my bag over and i'm going to come here to the side seam and in the side seam behind the buttonhole so it's actually in the seam you're going to find an opening you're going to slip your safety pin or your bodkin into that now if you've created a casing you're going to have a channel if you haven't created a casing your safety pin or bodkin can move freely. I'm just going to scrunch my fabric till I get to the other side. And then I'm going to find that same opening in the side seam behind the buttonhole on the opposite side and pull my one piece of long ribbon through that. Again, you're working with layers, so you're gonna have to kind of jiggle it through there. When it comes out, I'm gonna release my bodkin. Now I'm gonna have one short side, one looped side, on the first side I started with, and then I'm gonna have two short tails and one long tail on the other side. I'm gonna take this long tail, feed it into my bodkin or safety pin, and loop this back through that same hole in the side seam that I just went through and come out the opposite side seam again. And then I'm gonna release my bodkin or safety pin. And now on either side, I'll have two short ribbons and one that looks kind of like a loop. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna line up the two ends of the raw edge ribbon, and I'm gonna gently pull these and then move down and cinch my bag up. From there, I'm just gonna tie knots in the ends. You can seal your ribbon with some fray check on the ends, but you have your little drawstring bag. You can fill it up. This will open and close, so you can fill it up. You can make one with Santa mail or a bag of coal. No matter which one of these you decide to make, the steps are going to be the same as the video. The only difference will be is this, the thread colors that it calls for, for the different um, applique pieces and detail work and stitching. You'll find all the step-by-steps for the bag of coal on page 10 and 11 of your instructions. So I hope you enjoyed this project. This is this great little bonus for the, for the Kimberbell Digital Dealer Exclusives or our Kimberbell Club at Sew A Lot. I hope that you have enjoyed um, learning how to put these together and I hope that you can get started and get these ready for Christmas. You'll have a jump start on things and be ready to go. Look forward to next month with you and if you have any questions, let us know.